Welcome to the Remarkable Riparian Digital Short Course, an online education series covering the basics of riparian understanding. This self-paced learning program is produced by the Nueces River Authority in Texas, but the concepts presented here are pretty much universal to all natural waterways. In Lesson 2, we'll discuss the many functions performed by riparian areas. But first, let's make sure we have a common understanding of what riparian means. This is a term that has really only come into common usage in Texas in the past 10 to 15 years, even among land management professionals. A riparian area or zone is the part of the landscape that flanks rivers and streams, shown in blue on this picture. This includes the stream bank, floodplain, plants, soils, and rocks that make up the ribbon of land that follows and interacts with the waterway. Areas adjoining lakes, reservoirs, and wetlands also are considered riparian, but this short course will focus mainly on rivers and streams. One of the main functions of the riparian area is to dissipate the energy of floodwaters. The vegetation and woody debris found in and along streams and in the floodplain help slow floodwaters down. This allows sediments such as sand, mud, and silt to be captured by vegetation. A stream's meander or crookedness also helps slow the water down, as explained in Lesson 1. Riparian vegetation, large wood, and rocks can help to trap sediments and hold them in the stream banks. Flood mud is full of organic matter, which makes it extra absorbent. Where these sediments have been trapped and stabilized, riverbanks store water like a sponge. After the flood subsides, the water stored in the banks is released slowly into the channel. This helps keep creeks and rivers flowing long after it rains. It also provides a continuous source of recharge for aquifers. Over time, larger and stronger vegetation develops. A maze of interconnected roots can hold stream banks in place even during very large floods. Without this structure, banks can be swept away and river channels can be moved around even by small floods. Erosion and deposition are natural forces that balance each other. Responding to changes, rivers can take material through erosion from one bank and deposit it downstream. Much of the important work of moving sediment downstream is accomplished by high-velocity water traveling in the channel. Once that water slows down in a bend or over a well-vegetated floodplain, eroded materials are deposited. Through this process, rivers adjust their course and the size of their channel to deal with changes. When rivers are experiencing large changes or disturbances, such as from urbanization or development in the watershed, erosion can be severe. Extreme or recurring erosion is usually a sign that the river system is under stress. As we've seen, riparian areas have a lot of jobs to do, from filtering and storing water to building up fertile floodplains and controlling erosion. They catch the water and hold it on the land. They turn water sheds into water catchment areas. Amazingly, riparian areas amount to only about 1% of the landscape, but they do the lion's share of the work managing our waterways. The tiny blue lines on this map represent creeks and rivers in riparian areas. We have a lot to thank them for, whether we realize it or not. But riparian areas can only perform all these functions if they are healthy. As we discussed in Lesson 1, many well-meaning land managers unintentionally damage riparian areas, reducing their ability to function. It can be tricky to know whether your riparian area is healthy because they don't all look the same. They can be covered mostly in grasses or mostly trees. They can have steep banks or gentle slopes. But what they all have in common is proper vegetation and physical structure to allow them to do their important job. In Lesson 3, we'll talk about the many ways people use and appreciate rivers and how riparian functions make that possible.